Which, however, leads me to the next adjective that doesn't make to... to ding, ding. Hey Rabbits, it's Trixie, and today I want to present some German adjectives to you that seem to make no sense whatsoever, at least at first glance. Why do Germans say beer serious, poodle wet or stick dark? Watch this video to learn more about these bizarre words and let me cast some light on their origins. Firstly, there's the German adjective steinreich, which means stone rich. Someone who is steinreich is a wealthy person. But what do stones have to do with how prosperous you are? I mean, rocks lie around everywhere. If they were of immense value, people would just constantly pick them up and fill their pockets with them until they could barely move anymore. Or we would use rocks to pay stuff. But that's not the case. <gasps> There was a stone in my shoe! I'm rich! Exactly! Said no one ever. So how come the adjective steinreich implies that wealth is connected to stones? Well, the smarty pants amongst you might have guessed it already. Stein refers to Edelstein. A precious stone, a jewel or a gem. So instead of stone rich, steinreich means gem rich rich in gems. Do you know this when you have a hair around here and you can't find it, but you feel it all the time? Duh! If you own a lot of jewels, gems or precious stones, you are rich and you live a fine life. Surprisingly, especially men with a lot of money tend to have very young and sexy partners who are only in for the love, of course. The wealthy, luxurious, 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 the wealthy, luxurious lifestyle is just Ah, a lucky side effect. Sometimes the guy is like 70 and the woman is 20 something. Some may call her blood young. And I don't want to blame anyone. Despite quite some shit that happened to me, I still believe in love. And I don't think it's depending on age, ethnicity or gender, etc. As long as it's legal, I approve love. But back to topic and back to the word I just used. Blood young. Blood, young. This German adjective emphasizes the youngness of somebody. Somebody unlike you, you mean. 27. <coughs> but how is being young connected to blood? Is it insinuating the blood shed during childbirth? Or when a woman loses her virginity? Nah. Sorry to disappoint you, but the true origin of this word is way less dramatic. In fact, it derives from blut, which is an old word for blues, meaning something like mere, sheer or pure. It simply gives the adjective young more weight. It puts more emphasis on it. Now, sometimes a man and a woman love each other so much that, be it intentional or accidental, they end up making a new tiny human being. The woman gets pregnant, bam, nine months later, baby, and nothing is as it was before. I mean, everything is perfect, of course. Their hearts are as full of love as their garbage bins are of dirty diapers. A diaper. What was that in German again? Oh, right. Die Winde. Ta-da! Why would you even do that? Which is part of the adjective Windelweich, literally translating to diaper soft. <laughs> and as a mom of two, I can definitely tell you that this adjective does indeed make a lot of sense. Pillows, feathers, butter, jello, yeah, they're all soft, but nothing, nothing beats the squishiness of a full diaper on a baby's butt. <laughs> I bet your boobs. <laughs> it's like a comfy butt airbag. So sorry, I guess, because this word doesn't actually fit the video's topic, but I had to include it anyway. It's just too awesome. I should maybe mention though that Windelweich is usually used in a violent context. Jemanden Windelweich schlagen, to beat someone diaper soft. But that would kind of destroy this whole cute fluffy baby butt vibe. So there, I said it. Let's move on. When you become a mother or a father, lots of activities that you enjoyed before will have to wait. The baby consumes most of your time and energy. Spontaneously having a drink or two with your friends is no longer possible. Which, however, leads me to the next adjective that doesn't seem to make any sense. Now just a bit less awkward and we did it. That doesn't seem to make any sense. Bia Ernst. Beer. 
serious. With, oh, they drink a lot of beer and they never smile. Being two very famous stereotypes about the Germans, Bier Ernst is one of the most German words, I suppose. Now, if you ask me, having a beer with your friends is usually considered a fun matter. I mean, I've never heard a German say, Och nee, Werner hat einen Bier zur Party mitgebracht. Na, jetzt ist der Spaß wohl zu Ende. Los Leute, macht die Musik aus, wir gucken jetzt irgendwas auf Arte. Quite the opposite, actually. Shouldn't it be a... <laughs> beer? Shouldn't it be beer fröhlich or beer lustig instead of beer ernst? Because isn't beer the German symbol of leisure, friendship and levity? Not saying that you can't have a good time without alcohol. But it seems paradox, doesn't it? Well, the explanation is that a long time ago people assumed that drinking wine would cheer you up. <laughs> while drinking beer would make you feel depressed and melancholy. Hi there! <laughs> mm. Personally, I cannot confirm that. But apparently the hypothesis was strong enough to lay the foundation of this adjective's origin. There's even a noun as well. Der Bier Ernst, translating to the beer, earnestness. As a German, I feel the urge to say, this word is nonsense und ist meine Bier Ernst. Be it beer or lemonade or any other kind of beverage. Drinking refreshes us and every now and then it helps us wash down food especially if it's very dry food, such as bread. Which brings me to the next adjective. If a meal or also a conversation topic is uncomfortably dry, you can call it trocken in German. That literally means fart dry. Entschuldigung, Herr Ober, dieser Kuchen hier ist furztrocken. Der Lurch lurkt hervor. Furz! Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's a bit of an unfortunate choice of words. My question is, is a fart really the most reliable reference when it comes to dryness. How am I gonna explain this? The person inventing this word must have had a very healthy and trustworthy digestive system. No accidents ever. I guess there was no Mexican fast food back then. So yeah, Furztrocken, it does make sense, but only with a good deal of trust and optimism. Blood, pee, wet farts. Quality content, everyone. Now imagine you just had dinner with your friends at a restaurant. The food was amazing, not trocken at all, and you had a great time together. By the time you want to go home, it's already quite late. You leave the restaurant, pitch black night. The German word for pitch black is pechschwarz, which seems reasonable since pitch is a black substance. It makes sense to connect it with darkness or blackness. But there's also stockdunkel or stockfinster, stick dark, with stick referring to a tree branch. Of course, as a YouTuber, I don't go outside much, but the way I remember tree branches is that they are brown at most, sometimes greenish or gray, but not black. So how come sticks, tree branches serve as a reference for darkness when there are so many better things? Crows, ants, pupils, licorice, the heart of the hater sidekick. Once again, the answer to this question is quite unsatisfying. Stock derives from Stock, which describes a tree trunk or a block of wood. So it's basically like Stock dunkle Nacht, but tree branches aren't black. This word makes no sense. Ah, oh, that's because it doesn't actually relate to a tree branch. Oh, really? So what does it relate to? A tree trunk. But try to think of a tree trunk in a more general way. Simply is something solid and strong. Because that's the reason why Stok was used to put emphasis on a word. Stok dunkel combines the heaviness of a tree trunk and the intensity of the dark. So you stand there in der stockfinsteren Nacht, thinking about whether you should walk home or call a cab now. The decision is made for you because all of a sudden it starts raining cats and dogs. Now, funnily enough, there's also a German adjective that combines wetness and dogs. Poodles, to be precise. The word I'm talking about is pudelnass. Poodle, wet. It's used when someone is drenched, soaking wet, soaked to the skin. But why a poodle? The explanation is that poodles used to assist hunters. Their main jobs being the hunting of water birds and water retrieving. Needless to say, to do so, they usually got very wet. Poodle wet. All right, rabbits. These have been some German adjectives that 
seem to make no sense whatsoever, but if you look into their origins, a couple of them suddenly do, but most of them still don't. I hope the video wasn't furztrocken. I hope you liked it. If so, please leave a thumbs up because that would make me really, really happy. Subscribe to Don't Trust the Rabbit for more videos like this one. And in case you want to support my channel even a bit more since I'm not steinreich, you can also find me on Patreon. I would really appreciate your help. Now I wish you all a wonderful day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!